Hello, my name is Father Larry Richards, and I am the founder of the Reason for Our Hope Foundation. The foundation is based on 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Always be ready to give the reason for your hope. We are called to be light in the darkness. When you light a candle, no matter how dark the darkness is, the light is always stronger. God came to give us hope. We are called to be the hope in the darkness, to bring the light in the darkness. And we want to give you hope. For more information, visit us online at thereasonforourhope.org and give us the reason for your hope. Come into a living, loving relationship with Jesus. He is the only hope that we have. God bless you. Hello, my name is Father Larry Richards. I am the pastor of St. Joseph Church, Bread of Life Community, and I'm also the founder of the Reason for Our Hope Foundation, and I am doing your parish mission, you poor people. I'm very sorry I have to come to you this way, but because I am a pastor, I gotta stay at my parish on weekends and be there for my people. So I'm sorry, but this is the way I have to come to you, to invite you to be a member of this mission. Now, to give you a little background about me, my name is Father Larry. I grew up in Pittsburgh, PA, like I already told you. But I was also director of campus ministry in an all-boy Catholic high school in Erie, Pennsylvania, called Cathedral Preparatory School for Boys. And every year we had anywhere from 650 to 700 boys. One year we had 666 boys. Six, 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 the sign of the Antichrist. Ugh. So he threw one out the first week to get rid of that number. But anyway, every year, the same thing. We're a big sports school, the school I taught at. Every year we were state champions in one thing or another. And my big fight every year as director of campus ministry is what's more important, God or sports? What do you think won? Sports, those pagans. Yep, every year I'd walk in and I'd say, gentlemen, what are you going to do this year? We're going to be state champions, Father! And I'd go, whoa, state champions? And I'd say, what are you going to do to become state champions? You know what they'd say? You're not going to believe this, but this is what they do. They did then and they still do. They would work out four hours, four hours throwing a football, four hours kicking a soccer ball, four hours kicking a hockey puck. The swimmers would get up at four o'clock in the morning just to get the swimming pool, just so they can become state champions, huh? Whoa, all that stuff. Now, if I ask those same kids, gentlemen, what are you going to do this year? And if they'd say, we're going to be state champions, Father. And if I'd say, what are you going to do to prove that to me? And if they'd say, well, we're going to go to practice when we feel like it for 45 minutes to an hour, depending on who the coach is, we're going to have nice thoughts about the game. I'd say, eh. Wrong answer, gentlemen. You are going to stink in whatever kind of sports you're going to play. And they know that. But those same kids, I would say every year, gentlemen, you want to go to heaven? Yes, Father! Whoa, you want to go to heaven? How nice. What are you doing to prove to me, gentlemen, you want to go to heaven? And you know what? They'd say you're not going to believe this. They'd say, well, we go to church once a week when we feel like it for about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on who the priest is, and we try to be good people. And Wrong answer, gentlemen. I used to say, gentlemen, do you think God's Barney? I love you. You love me. So to sit there and to become a state champion, you're going to have to work real hard, four hours a day, hard, hard, hard. But to go to heaven, uh, you know, don't get mad at me, God says, don't get mad. Just, just try to be a good person. And could you come to Mass every once? Oh, if it's not too much trouble. Too often people think God is Barney. And see, what we're here to do this week at this parish mission is to help you to experience that what you love the most, God, you have to give the most time to. So this mission is going to be eight hours of your life. Eight hours, and some of you are going, oh, Father, eight hours, that'll kill me. Yeah, I know. But you can handle it if it's for God, huh? If God's the one you're living for easily. Now, let me put it to you this way. Let me ask you. If I said, if you come to every night of the mission, eight hours of your life, two hours uh, the first night, two hours the second, two hours the third, two hours the last night, if you come to the eight hours of the mission, on the last night of the mission, I'll give you one million dollars. One million? Mm -hmm. Would you come to the mission? I'll bet you you would. I'll bet you you'd cancel every other plan you had. You would not watch anything because you'd sit there and say, all I got to do is show up to get a million dollars. That's all you got to do is show up and you'll get a million dollars. Would you do it? 
The answer is yes, of course you would. Then why wouldn't you do it for Jesus? Why would you do it for a million bucks, but you won't give it to do it for Jesus? If you do it for Jesus, you know, let's say you did come and I gave you a million dollars. You could drop dead 10 minutes after I gave that million dollars. And that million dollars didn't help you at all. But if the same thing happened with Jesus, you live forever. I make you two promises if you come to this mission. I've done over 800 missions and talks and different things throughout the years. I make you two promises. The first promise I make you if you come to the mission is you'll never be bored. I promise. You might sit there and say, did he just say that? I think he just said that. Is he a priest? I think he's a priest. But you'll never be bored, I promise. The second thing I promise you if you come to the mission is your life will be changed forever. Not because of me. I'm some jerk from here, huh? It's because of Jesus Christ. If you say, Jesus, you're worth eight hours of my life, I promise you, your life will be changed forever. I promise. Now, what's the mission going to be about? Well, the first night, we're going to talk about prayer and coming to know how much you're loved by God. Now, some of you might look at me and say, Father, I'm twice your age. What are you going to teach me? Oh, nothing, I know. But let me ask you this. What if I told you in two hours from now, you're going to be dead? Would you be afraid? Boy, you shouldn't if you really know Jesus, if you really know him, huh? You know, years ago, I'm very close to the Carmelites in our diocese, and I had my first Mass there, and I got to know one Carmelite very well. Her name was Sister Christine. And Sister Christine was the extern nun. She was a great nun. And uh, she wasn't feeling good one day, and so she went to the doctor. It was more than a day. She hadn't been feeling good for months. But she went to the doctor, and the doctor says, Oh, Sister, you should have come and seen me earlier. Sister, I'm very sad to say this, but you have a very advanced cancer. You might only have about a month to live. And Sister Christine started to smile from ear to ear. Can you imagine? And the doctor looked at her and says, Oh, Sister, I don't think you understand. You're going to die. And Sister says, Oh, Doctor, I don't think you understand. Either way, I win. If I live, I'm with Jesus. If I die, I'm with Jesus. Either way, I'm with Jesus. Is that the way you live your life? That no matter what, if you lose your job, you lose your money, you lose everything, it's okay because Jesus is with you. Are you that intimate with Jesus? Well, that's what I promise you the first night. If you don't like it, after the first night, you don't have to come back. But by the first night, two hours, I'm not only going to talk to you because that would kill anybody. I'd be like going to hell or purgatory for a long time. I'm going to help you have an experience of Jesus Christ so you know in your heart that you're loved, and that no matter what, it's going to be okay because God will never let you go. That's the first night. The second night's what we call family night. Now, every night's family night, but especially the second. So you can bring the kids every night, but especially the second night, because that will be in the context of the Mass, and we'll talk about the healing that needs to take place in families and how to make your family a happy place, an affirming place, a place of joy, huh? Now, parents, your number one job, of course, as parents is to get your kids to heaven. Now, if you ask your high school kids, especially, hey, do you want to come to this parish mission? What are they going to say? No, I'm not going to any mission. You say, get in the car. You're going to the mission. I promise you, you get them here, I'll take care of them. I dealt with high school kids my whole life. But you got to get them here. And they might hate you the first night, but they'll thank you after, I promise. Just get them here. Bring the whole family every night, but especially the second night of the mission. The third night of the mission is not for kids under sixth grade because that night is the night of the, uh, where we talk about confession and we talk about the passion. And the passion talk's pretty intense. And when we talk about confession, we'll be talking about the sixth commandment pretty explicitly. And so kids under sixth grade, unless you decide different, but it's not really, it'll be an adult night that night. But let me tell you something. Some of you haven't been to confession in over 25 years, and you know that. Once I was in Atlanta doing a big parish mission there, and someone hadn't been to confession in 48 years. You don't think the angels and saints sang when they finally came home? You have nothing to be afraid of. We're not here to hurt you. We're here to set you free. Some of you, it's been a long time. It's time to come home. We'll take care of you, I promise. The last night of the mission is the night of adoration and healing. We will take Jesus Christ in the most blessed sacrament and we'll put him on the altar 
And then everybody that comes that night, we'll anoint them with oil from St. Joseph's Oratory, Montreal, Canada. Great miracles happen through the intercession of St. Joseph. I hope you believe in miracles. If you don't believe in miracles, what's the point? That our God is real and God can do anything. And I promise you, the last night of the mission in this very church, God will perform great miracles. When the God of the universe is present and we come before him with faith, he can do anything. Do you believe God can do anything? Do you believe it? Come to the mission. Two promises. You'll never be bored. And two, your life will be changed forever. The question is, is God worth your time? The question is, what's more important than God? You answer that by whether you show up or whether you don't. You hate me, don't you? Please come to the mission. Please. God bless you. We'll see you at the mission.